this video yesterday but I was uh, I was um, too scared to make it so right now uh, I'm ready to I'm ready to make I'm ready to make uh, a video about what happened yesterday now I had a bit of a health scare what I had for dinner was a, a double quarter pounder with cheese from McDonald's and um, I was down to it. I was down to the last bite, but all of a sudden I just couldn't. I couldn't uh, eat it anymore. So my, my stomach was telling me no more. Then a few minutes later, I was cold and clammy. I um, went to the bathroom okay, to take some shit out. You know what I mean. And. Yeah, I was feeling uh, uh, weak in the knees. Yeah, weak in the knees. I was about, I was, uh, was going to, but I, I had to push through with uh, my usual content creation thing. So I did a, I did an intro video for my next uh, episode reviews digest for my other channel. And this dog. Yeah. he just finished his meal <laughs> um, my dog Jacques uh, suddenly sat sat beside me right here this this was the this was the chair I was uh, that was the chair I was I was on when I made the intro video I was already I was already weak at the time okay so I, but I had to push but I had to grind but I had to grind further he was he sat right here beside this right he sat behind he sat beside he sat he actually sat behind me uh, he was um, was lying down and i got i had a feeling that he was that he that he knew something was wrong with me okay so I yeah, uh, gave him a gave him a thank you pat. I said thank you, thank you. But I said okay na siya ya, okay na siya ya. So showed concern. Okay, that's what. Well, <clears throat> that's the uh, the actual climax of this story. Um, it pays to have a pet, right? Like I like I said in one of my one of my last one of my previous videos. They can actually tell if you're uh, if you're sick or not. If you're if you're healthy or not right so my dog my dog showed me my dog was telling me that um, something was wrong with me and um, right now I'm feeling a little better uh, I, I, I got a I got a nervous stomach right now because of the <laughs> the um, the upload to my other channel it's, uh, it's taking it's taking really long because it, it is a long video it's a, really, it's a really long video and uh, aside from the nervous talk yeah I'm fine I'm totally fine I even told my mother uh, remind me remind me never to order that many remind me to never order that 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 big hamburger again at night all right my my stomach couldn't take it anymore because it's it's because of the keto diet it has uh, adjusted itself so I think it feels a, a good sign, and it's also uh, my stomach telling me don't uh, don't do that anymore. <laughs> but bottom line, uh, pets can really pets can really tell if you're uh, if you're down, if you're sick. Uh, no matter no matter how no matter how no matter how hard you hide it. Um, uh, from from other humans, right? animals can tell. So, well, again, like I said in in uh, a previous video, it pays to have a pet. So, so I don't know.
thank I thank my dog for that so for letting me know that uh, that I wasn't feel, that I really wasn't feeling well and he uh, he made me be honest with myself so thank you he, he's outside me I just saw this uh, this tweet by a certain just uh, by this certain guy I don't know how how accurate his source for uh, source for history is but how did he arrive at a comparison between Bitcoin and tulip mania where does this guy get his history from history channel nope <laughs> but anyway um, I too, I too, I first heard of Tulip Mania on History Channel, alright? But, I don't think it, I don't think Tulip Mania lasted as long as Bitcoin, alright? If my history serve, serves me correct, Tulip Mania didn't last a year, okay? In, ca in case you guys don't, uh, are not familiar with it, Tulip Mania happened in... Uh, I think uh, Denmark. All right, I I'm not sure, but it happened in Sc in Scandinavia, the um, uh, the place where the place I think the place I think where where tulips abound, where the tulip is their national flower right now. So it happened because uh, there was a uh, the tulip was a valued commodity at the time. Okay, they were they were rarely grown, and it's uh, I think it's hard to grow at the time. So their buds or yung seeds, okay, they're called buds. They're seeds. I think mga ganong kalaki yon. Okay, they're that big. I think one tulip bulb fetched for peak at sev several thousands of dollars today. <clears throat> at that time, all right. And well. The commodities market, I think, was in its infancy at the time. Okay, so it was a valued commodity, and the price went up to in today's money, uh, several thousands of dollars. It actually made um, a family of orphans millionaires when they bought when they sold their their remaining box of tulips. It was traded. It was instantly traded on the floor then. It did fetch for uh, millions of dollars today. Okay, uh, yeah. Soon after that happened, I think. Okay, if my again, if my history serves me correct, it crashed. The price of tulips on the commodities market crashed. One day, no one was in, no one was interested in buying anymore. So of course, when that happened. Phew, The tulip market crashed. Tulip mania was over. Okay, but I'm very sure tulip mania did not last a year, much less twelve years like Bitcoin. <laughs> this guy has to understand. Okay, Bitcoin is not meant to um to well, to replace uh. The world's currencies as of now the fiat currencies the paper money but people are now looking at it as a way to store wealth much like much like gold and silver right now the more uh, it's now one of the more sensible ways of storing wealth okay because bottom line people are people's distrust over their own country's monetary systems is growing especially now especially now so i am still dumbfounded as to how this guy was able to compare tulip mania was to, was able to compare bitcoin to tulip mania i am still dumbfounded at his, at his basis is at his, this historical basis was how do you compare something that only lasted less than a year to something that to something that is still ongoing after 12 years you tell me 
You tell me, Twitter. Okay? You tell me. Comment below. Okay? Let's fight. <laughs> All right? But let's be clear. But here's my own bottom line. Bitcoin is no fad. Right? As a means of storing storing wealth, it's meant to stay. Okay? It's meant to stay. Now, for to make it easier for that guy to understand, Bitcoin is no tulip mania. I just went over these um, these live sales calls videos. Uh, kind of went them over again because I really want to check out if the um, let's call this. I really want to check uh, if. If I'm not being bitten by shiny object syndrome or what, if these are legit. And I now find these things hard to believe. Someone's privacy has been violated in those, uh, in those um, live sales calls videos. Okay. Because based on my experience, the sales call only consists of two parties. You, the salesman. And, of course, the prospect. A true sales professional should be privy to his sales calls. Okay? It should only be between you and the prospect. Now, when someone else watches it, or when someone else is there to, to, to overhear the conversation, well, <laughs> that's an entirely different matter altogether someone's privacy has been violated in my point of view if you're the sales guru for me you don't have to do that okay you do not have to do that to prove your point to everybody that your um, your technique or system works you know what's the most powerful way to legitimize uh, to legitimize a sales guru how LinkedIn the testimonials okay the testimonials of both the sales guru's client and his students simple as pie if you're if if you're if you're a salesperson and and uh the, the client totally agrees to give you a uh, a written testimonial about uh his experience with you that says something if you're a sales guru and you're um and your student voluntarily gives them gives you a written testimonial about how good your system is and how it has um, jumped their income significantly that says something all right the only persons who will believe a live sales call are the total rookies or someone who hasn't done his due diligence well enough this is my conspiracy theory about, about about these live sales calls, these sales calls videos. Someone's privacy has been violated. I'm 60% sure the other party didn't know that there was a live sales call. Now, if the other party does know, well, hey, it's all scripted. Scripted well enough to make you the total beginner believe that it is an actual sales call so LinkedIn here's my power tip okay if you see a live sales call or any sales call video from not from not just YouTube okay from any social media platform stop watching it it's not educational in nature and well According to my theory, someone's privacy has been violated there. Again, LinkedIn. If you see a live sales call or sales call video for that matter on any social media platform, stop watching it right there. Stop watching it right there. All right? It's not credible. In, it's not uh, It's not credible. It is not credible for either party, even for even for the viewer, even for viewers like you. 
you would rather believe a testimonial than a live sales call. But that's just me. I just um, went over went over LinkedIn a few several minutes ago. I just had two new connections. Okay, these two new connections did the same thing. They went straight right away, went straight away in offering their business, in offering their their business opportunity or whatever Chuba Tennis they they had to offer. <clears throat> and you know how I, you know how I roll. Instagram when it comes to spamming and salesiness I got zero tolerance for that so I unconnected uh, both of them and deleted the conversation altogether so I'm done or so I thought a few minutes later one of them reset the spam message I got so fucking pissed off so I had him reported report after after all of that I figured may pandemia na nga nangyayari ganito pa rin ganito, rin, ganito pa rin ba ang system ng mga network marketers sa buong mundo they still resort to spamming and salesiness despite being stuck at home because of this pandemic? If you ask me, everyone should make this pandemic a reality check for them. You get me Instagram? You get me now? In my honest opinion, spamming and silsiness are COVID proof. Unfortunately. Okay. Unfortunately, there are still people who still want to spam and uh, salesiness their way to network marketing success. It might have worked uh, as early as the as early as the mid-90s. It doesn't now. Alright? These people have to realize that spamming and salesiness won't get them anywhere in social media. Just like what I did to those two. Alright? Just like what I did to those two. What did they get? <laughs> Zero. It log. So, Instagram, if if you know anybody, okay? If you guys know anybody who are who's into spamming and salesiness, no matter what, no matter what business model they're using, okay, report them right away. That's my power tip for you. Report them right away. Do not hesitate. Do not even, uh, do not even reply to their spam messages, because the conversation will, because the conversation won't stop. Okay, the conversation will never stop. The best way to shut them up is by reporting them. Maybe that will give them a reality check. I hate to say this again, but spamming and salesiness are COVID proof. So I to, uh, put in this uh, early entry to remind you, Snapchat, that, well, in this world of um, bullying, cyberbullying not not uh, not to say that uh, I am I'm being bullied myself but I was once bullied in the past now when you think of it the worst person anybody anybody can bully is themselves okay. why why should you allow the world to dub you as a weakling to accept being a weakling when you're actually not see that's only validation for uh, for the people who are bullying you why should you let anybody um, 
validate your own personality all right so in order for you not to be bullied in order for you to keep the external bullies away stop bullying yourself snapchat stop bullying yourself I just saw um, the reboot of the Adams Family. <clears throat> to all those um, who's, who don't remember the Adams Family, okay, I remember. All right, I saw the the live action movie that had uh, acting legends like Raúl Julia, okay, the late Raúl Julia. That was actually his last. That was actually the last character he played before he passed away. Okay? See Raúl Julia, and it also introduced a. Um, a girl who goes by the name of Christina Ricci. All right. She's a great actress too. Now, the Adams family, okay, they they were first introduced uh they were first introduced in I believe that was the 1950s, okay, on US TV. They are the epitome of weirdness, all right? Now, uh you would find them cringy or creepy these days, but hey, the Adams Family disrupted American television during their time. They had several iterations after that. In the 70s, they were an animated series. Um, of course, in the 90s, Raul Julia played Gomez Adams. Angelica Houston was, um, was Morticia Adams. Of course, their kid, one of their kids is Christina Ricci there who played Wednesday Adams. Don't, don't actually sumikat si Christina Ricci sa Adams Family. Now, well, they are funny. Their brand of weirdness is funny. Okay? So, well, what can you learn as a content creator and also as an entrepreneur and as a network marketer from the Adams Family? Well, like I said before, the Adams Family disrupted American television at the time. Okay? Charles Adams, its creator, I don't know what he, I don't know what, what he was thinking but he probably created the Adams family to well basically to disrupt American TV at the time which was too family friendly was um, well, too uh, too wholesome for anybody's own good okay alongside rock and roll at the time okay rock and roll was in its infancy during the 50s alongside rock and roll the Adams family disrupted the the American way of life if you need to disrupt something do it this is your this should be your mantra as a content creator as an entrepreneur and well like me as a network marketer i kind of related to the adams family right now especially the the, the animated reboot because well i am disrupting uh, i'm disrupting uh network marketing right now because I'm telling, I'm basically telling people what not to do in network marketing. What not to do before you join network market, before, before you join a network marketing venture. Disruption is key if you want to create a name for yourself. So, you just have to Google them and learn from the Adams family. Thank you.